Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish for the celebration of the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you use Facebook, kindly check in now to let our people know, let people know that you profess your faith. In gratitude, we sing number 639, and the Lord, I'll be ever thankful, number 639. singing Psalm 145 today. I will praise your name, my King and my God. It's number 92 in your hymn book. Please sing it after me. I will praise your name my King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your Welcome those joining us today to participate in, our, in this liturgy. You'll find most of the prayers on the first page of the hymn book, and the hymn numbers are indicated on the boards. Please sign our guest book in the narthex.
Our presider is Father Paul Sparklin, assisted by our deacon, Jack McCabe. Let's take a moment now to silence our cell phones and to come to a quiet awareness of God's presence, remembering the needs of our loved ones and our world, and to give thanks for the many blessings we have received. Please stand now and welcome each other by name to our celebration. Our opening hymn is number 607, Sing a New Song Unto the Lord, number 607. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing hallelujah. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, let us call to mind our sins as we seek the Lord's loving compassion. Lord Jesus, you seek the lost. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you grant salvation to those who come to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are gracious and merciful. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Oh, 
and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite your young children to please come forward so that you may go and listen to God's word today. Come on up. May you go in peace. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, I'm going to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, be in that number when the saints go marching in. Reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew coming down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins, that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you may have made. For what you hated you would have not fashioned. And how could these things remain unless you willed it or, pers or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins that they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So, he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly 
and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. Now, these were familiar words to anyone who followed Jesus. His disciples heard these words all the time. In fact, by the time Jesus came to Jericho, his disciples had heard the words, he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner so many times from so many different voices in so many different towns that they could just about predict how the crowd would react. And by the time Jesus came to Jericho, his disciples were experts on grumbles. They knew all about the anger and the nudges and the stares that always seemed to follow the words, he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. And when you think about it, maybe that crowd, that angry grumbling crowd, had a point. After all, there were other houses, you know, Jericho, which is the oldest city in the world, it's one of those cities that I uh, uh, visited when I was on the Holy Land pilgrimage a few months ago. And back at that time, it was a suburban rich people's getaway from Jerusalem. It's about 16 miles away. And so there were other dinners, other places, other wealthy people Jesus could visit. Some would say Jesus was cooperating with this crook. He's encouraging. He's complicit. There were people in Jericho who obeyed the law. People who didn't cheat their friends or steal from their neighbors. There were people in Jericho who even on their worst day wouldn't dream of collecting taxes for the Romans. But just as he had done so many times before, Jesus went to stay at the house of a sinner. And this wasn't just any sinner, mind you. This was the chief tax collector and a wealthy man in this town of wealthy people. Some would say a traitor, a man who turned his back on his own people. But you might say, pardon the pun, he went out on a limb. And he did so by putting himself in a position where he could see, possibly out of spiritual curiosity. It seems that although he was a rich man, Zacchaeus was also humble enough to lose his dignity and to climb up in that sycamore tree. And as we so often read, Jesus takes the initiative. Jesus notices him and knows his name. That's the person Jesus wanted to stay with. That's the person Jesus stopped in Jericho to meet. You know, maybe I would have grumbled too. After all, aren't people like Zacchaeus the very people we spend our lives trying to avoid? Don't we study and pray and grow so that we can leave Zacchaeus and everything he represents far, far away? We learn, even as little children, that people who cheat, people who steal, people who betray their neighbors are just no good. 
And we discover very early that it's a lot easier and a whole lot safer to be with people who look and act a lot like us. And when we become parents, we try very hard to protect our families and give the people we love the very best of everything. And for many of us, that includes Zacchaeus-free dining experiences. After all, is it a lot easier to tell a sinner how to fix his life or her life than it is to let that sinner fix us dinner? It's a lot easier to pray for sinners, to pity them or condemn them, than it is to let those sinners minister to us. And let's face it, it's a lot easier to accept Zacchaeus' change of heart if his change of heart doesn't have to change me. And I guess it, when it comes right down to it, I really, I really prefer to keep Zacchaeus way up in that tree. Because when Jesus invites him to come down and share his life as a friend, as a companion, and the word companion uh, means to break bread, well, that's a whole new world, isn't it? But maybe that's why Jesus came to Jericho in the first place, to show us a whole new world, a radical new world. For me, this story reminds us that being called by Jesus doesn't put us into a special club or give us the keys to a private villa. Being called by Jesus doesn't separate us from anyone or give us an excuse to say, thank God I'm not Zacchaeus. I don't have to climb a tree to see Jesus. But the truth is, sisters and brothers, being called by Jesus, being forgiven by Jesus, being changed by Jesus, puts us on a journey and it puts us on a dusty road right smack in the middle of a crowd, looking up at a sycamore tree. And this isn't always an easy place to be. In fact, this journey will give us the challenge of a lifetime. Because if we answer that call and walk with Jesus, we have to walk with our eyes open. We have to be willing to see more than the wonderful friends who stand right beside us. Walking with Jesus means that we can no longer travel through the crowd, hoping to find a nice, safe place on the other side. Walking with Jesus means that when we look up to see that sinner in the sycamore tree, we don't just see Zacchaeus, we see ourselves. The story of Zacchaeus reminds us that Jesus continues to call, continues to forgive, continues to change the strangest people in the strangest places. And this story gives us hope that every time Jesus looks up from that crowd, he'll recognize us, call us each by name, and say, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our loving and merciful God wants us all to return to him. Let us turn to him today to offer our prayers. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the church, that grace continually flow into us and bring our baptismal calling to fulfillment in every effort of faith and goodness, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of Congress, that they may sincerely seek the truth and impartially evaluate it, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to forgive, that we may show ourselves as children of God through forgiving those who have wronged us and reaching out to them with concern and kindness, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the thousands of people affected by the devastating fires in California, may God's grace strengthen and sustain them as they work to rebuild their lives and communities. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that the spirit of sacrifice, modeled by those who came before us and shared by our parish family today, will continue for generations to come. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rose Lindner, whom we remember especially at this Mass, for those who are seriously ill or hospitalized, including Harrison Green, and for those who have recently died, including Mary Ellen Rapley, Alec and Ann Solori Anderson, and Leland Thompson, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, the intentions written in our book of intercessions and the faithfully departed in our book of remembrance. And for what or whom do we pray today? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly God, you sent Jesus to seek and to save the lost. Hear our prayers today and help us to believe in your loving mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We now invite our children preparing for a first reconciliation to come forward and offer their work to God by placing it in the basket at the front of the ambo. The Mupano Munda family will represent our parish community in bringing up the gifts of bread and wine to the altar. And as they do, we'll sing number 635, 
Let All Things Now Living, number 635. sisters and brothers that the sacrifices of these young children preparing for their first reconciliation and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own marvelous, wonderful light. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. He gave it to his friends and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We pray the words that Jesus himself once prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of 
God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. Our communion hymn is number 645, Amazing Grace 645.
hear our today's announcements. Anyone who wants to help plan Breakfast with Santa, please attend a meeting this Monday at 7 p.m. in the dock. Two new adult spiritual enrichment programs will begin this week, the week of November the 11th, next week. The Mass, facilitated by Deacon Ray, and a presentation on the basics of caring for seniors by Maria O'Shea. Please read the insert in today's bulletin for more information. Contribution envelopes to support the Archdiocese for Military Services are in the narthex, or you can donate online through Give Central. Poor box contributions this week will benefit Christopher's Place. The Mass of Remembrance is this Wednesday, November 6th, at 7 p.m. Please come and pray for those who were buried from our parish over the past year. If you are having a medical procedure or surgery soon, please meet our presider, Father Paul, at the baptismal font <laughs> for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick after he greets the I'm unforgettable. <laughs> I was away for a few days and I've forgotten his name. <laughs> I've been told by Father Paul that the lector who encourages the most people to come down to Donut Sunday today, down in the parish center, will receive a prize. <laughs> it's a one-way trip to Disney World. <laughs> coming so, out of your budget. <laughs> so I encourage you to help me win that prize today. <laughs> Please go down to the Conley Center after Mass and enjoy some coffee and donuts. Parents, there, there are also uh, uh, some volunteers downstairs uh, who will be facilitating some arts and crafts for our young children uh, to put uh, put all of you in the spirit of harvest time and Thanksgiving, which is coming up in a few weeks. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in uh, praying our vocations prayer. Uh, if you're visiting with us, you can find it on the back cover of the blue hymnals. And together, loving and generous God, it is you who call us by name and ask us to follow you. Help us to grow in the love and service of our church as we experience it today and give us the energy and courage of your spirit to shape its future. Grant us faith-filled leaders who will embrace Christ's mission of love and justice. Bless the parish of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton by raising up dedicated and generous leaders from our families and friends who will serve your people as sisters, priests, brothers, deacons, and lay ministers. Inspire us to know you better and open our hearts to hear your call. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your love. In gratitude we go forth to spread the good news singing number 724, I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 724. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, O oh weary one, lay down your head upon my as I was so weary, weak, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus.
Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, to pound and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live.